Hey everyone, this is Anthony from EvoTech Pacific and in today's video we're going to look at a file that a client of ours has sent in and the issue that they're having is the, the claws, this particular section here, aren't able to produce a watertight mesh. It's going to affect 3D printing. So we're going to have a look at what might be happening here. Now before we do that, I'm going to select this guy and just hide that and we know that there's nothing wrong with well let's let's have a look and we'll, we'll just hide this section here and maybe even that section there so we'll hide those guys there if we grab this and we go into our manufacturing tab and then go to mesh repair we'll see that it all basically disappeared now when that happens it means that there's something wrong with the actual file itself now whether that be uh, the surfaces, there might be naked edges, um, there could be trim issues, uh, it's really difficult to say but the only way that I've really found to fix something like this is to basically redo it again. Now, if we ungroup all of this, we should see these guys here, so we can get rid of these because we're just going to mirror them around, we only need to work on one of them. If we have a look at this and if we type in check and then hit enter. We're going to see here that the Rhino head prong object is not valid, obviously, you know, because it's not mesh repairing. It tells us that the trim isn't valid, that seeing the edge is manifold, but rep M, whatever that means, type is not outer. So there's a whole heap of issues with this, with this poly surface here. So as a result of that, we're really going to have to rework it. Um, so to do that, we're going to use the existing piece that we have here to replicate the arc of the claw. The only thing that we might need to do, and I don't have the gemstones, they weren't sent in with me, is just uh, recut our gem cutters. Because, you know, when we go through this re-sweeping process, you know, we're, we're gonna have a nice swept poly surface there, but it won't have any of the cutouts here for the gemstones. So that's something that we're gonna have to do later on. But let's get back into it. We're gonna go into a curve menu here. And I'm going to use the extract isocurve. Now it doesn't matter whether you use the dynamic extract isocurve or the standard extract isocurve, which lives a little bit further along. Either way, we're going to break history on this thing, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to go to extract isocurve, just the standard one. And the command line asks us to select our surface for the isocurve extraction. I'm going to take that up to about there. And then I'm also going to take it down to the bottom down here pretty close somewhere like that all right and then what I want to do is just toggle my direction and I want to take the extract ISO curve I'm going to grab that curve and, and you know just something like that if we were to take that around there then we're going to miss the ISO curve in here and that's going to cause issues so I want to take that ISO curve to somewhere that hasn't been affected by any of the cutouts and then we're going to hit enter all right so now this guy here I'm going to put him on the uh, the red layer and I'm just going to turn that layer off for the moment and let's put these onto something that we can actually see something like that there all right now the other thing that I like to do because we have obviously had issues with that previous claw it's not going to hurt to rebuild these curves so I'm going to just select my round curve first just type in rebuild and hit enter I don't want to place any more points into it so just 11 point, uh, sorry 8 points will be fine and then hit OK so that'll rebuild that nicely do the same thing for this guy here rebuild to 8 points and that's fine and then this guy rebuild to say 11 points for that one there and then hit OK to that. So we know that we've got the same arc, same profiles. And what we're going to do next is select our arc and we're going to go sweep one, U and U and enter. And we want to turn our mirror cap off. Reason for that is when we bring back the red section here, let's go to our wireframe for a minute. We want to go into say the front section here and we want to just bring that dome up you know a bit closer to where we were beforehand and also down the bottom here uh, where are we here okay so I just want to bring that dome down something like that there you know will be fine all right that part there isn't going to matter because you're not ever going to see it all right 
So once we've got that there, we're going to hit OK to that, and I'm going to turn off that red section. Now, all I need to do here, and if you want to test if this is going to work before you start doing anything else, we can just select it and go to Manufacturing and hit Mesh, re uh, mesh Repair. And you can see here, it gives us a, a tidy mesh. All right, so you know that by re-sweeping this, that's all good. So I'm going to hit Escape to that. We don't want to do that just yet. And I'm going to go here, right click on my mirror from center. Again, I don't, I'm not concerned about dynamics for this one here. Grab that. And again, right click our mirror from center. And we end up with something that looks like that. So that all we really need to do now is when we hit show, and we'll just hide that shank again, we've got our newly swept claws that are going down into the center there. We can, uh, if we had the stones here, we could use our gem cutter to recut them. As I said, I don't have them, so I can't do that. But if we were to select everything here and then go to our mesh repair function, we'll see here that we'll get a watertight mesh. And, um, and that should make our 3D printers happy again. And we end up with something that looks like this. So you can see here that everything has meshed properly. If we hit OK to that, then we've got our, uh, our watertight mesh all ready to go. And uh, that should be ready for exportation to the, uh, the casting company or 3D printer of your choice. And they should be able to 3D print this without any issue. All right. If you found this video at all helpful, then please feel free to click on the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon to be notified of any further or future uploads. It really does help us out a lot. I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed lately. We've seen a pretty big jump in subscriptions over the past probably month or so, which is fantastic to see. And yeah, really appreciate it. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that helps.